Hello, good morning. My name is Shore Vera, and I welcome you to another edition of Sunday Morning Dose. Sunday Morning Dose is a place where we discuss God's word from Christ's perspective. We usually say to ourselves here that if a thing would not make sense to Christ, it shouldn't make sense to us as followers of Christ, believers of Christ, or what many people would like to call protégés. Of Christ we are supposed to exemplify Christ's way here on earth and that is our responsibility and that is what we should live up to so today we'll continue on the conversation we started a week ago beyond stories beyond stories if impact must be made by Christian by us Christ likes then the Bible must be interrogated. We must discuss the Bible from the perspective of absorbing the lessons. And then there are quite interesting and intriguing stories in the Bible. Very intriguing, you may want to say. But beyond the stories, we must be able to draw out the lessons, the principles, so as to absorb it and utilize it in our personal life. Because stories might be peculiar. Your story might be peculiar to mine. But principles is universal. Principles are universal. Truth is universal. So we must be able to draw out principles from the intriguing stories in the Bible so as to apply such truth into our lives. And that is what we hope that this series would achieve looking at some of the interesting stories in the bible and seeing how we can draw those principles and apply them to our lives so one of the most interesting and intriguing stories in the bible if not the most actually <laughs> is um, the story of david and Goliath. <laughs> you do not necessarily need to be a Christian or a church goer to have had this story. It's been told several, several couple of times. So you want to say, what is it about beyond stories, just like what we're looking at? So the story uh, is in the book, first Samuel chapter 17. Yeah, just like of course, there were incidents that led to 1 Samuel verse se chapter 17, but the eventual story of David confronting Goliath and killing Goliath happened in that passage of the Bible. So let's draw lessons, let's draw principles that we can apply to our lives and then begin to generate results. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 4 the philistines had a champion fighter named goliath he was from gat he was about nine feet four inches tall he came out of the philistine camp they had a professional coming into the battle they are what does professional means it means someone who have been dedicated all their lives towards a cause they had invested into getting a professional to do the job. <laughs> One of the first lessons that we must learn from this story is that Goliath is a professional, is an expatriate hired by the Philistines to come and do their job. So in our daily lives, we must begin to think about how we can get professional help. We must begin to get, think of how we can get knowledge that would help us further our course here on life, in, in, in here and in any aspect of our lives. We must begin to think in that line. They got a professional for themselves, Goliath. So think expatriate, think professional, think of getting help. In a professional way hey, sometimes we probably might not be able to create all the answers we need 
But the wisdom there is that we are able to consult or leverage on someone else's uh, idea or as, uh, the, their professional uh, knowledge on a particular matter. So seek professional help if you have to. Seek it. Seek, go for that medical checkup. Seek professional help. Verse 8. Goliath stood and shouted to the Israelite soldiers, Why have you taken positions for battle? I am a Philistine, and you are Saul's servant. Choose a man and send him to fight me. Choose a man and send him to fight me. You know, in, in the course of our growth here on earth, and in our professional growth, we we'll realize that we we'll, we are getting to the point where we don't have time to waste anymore, and that this is what expatriates do. They don't waste time confronting lesser problems. They go for the root. They go and solve the problem from the root. You don't just dabble around the problem and looking for uh, solace in it. Rather. You go and deal with the root. So, the, one of the reason, one of the lessons here is that Goliath is such an expatriate, and he won't want to waste his time. He would not want to waste his time. So he suggested, "Give me your best man to fight with me. Give me your best man to fight with me, and let's decide this battle once and for all. There is no time to waste. There is no time to waste." So in verse 11, when Saul and the Israelites had the Philistines' word, they were very afraid. You know, the Bible says that um, faith comes by hearing, you know, hearing words. And then, just like faith would come by hearing, fear also could come. So the tactics here and the principle here is that you speak. <laughs> you know, one of the most interesting things that a man should know how to do is to know how to speak. Is to know how to speak. One of the most interesting things we must do is to know how to speak. To speak to our challenges. To speak and address our situations. To bring hope to a hopeless situation. You know, and you see, you see a lot of people not knowing how to communicate, not knowing how to speak, not knowing how to convince people to follow them in spite or despite their situation. So you hear people say, it's because I do not have money again, that's why you have changed your attitude towards me. No, they didn't change their attitude towards you because you do not have money. They change their attitude towards you because you have failed to communicate the possibility of a brighter tomorrow. So you must learn how to speak. Sign up for a public speaking class. Sign up for a public speaking coaching or mentoring um, uh, classes. And then learn how to speak. Learn how to communicate yourself. Learn how to drive people towards a goal. So in this case, Goliath needed to speak to them, to intimidate them, to instill fear into them. And in verse 11, he had achieved that. Saul and his men were very, very terrified. So you must learn to speak. Verse 15, but David went back and forth from Saul to Bethlehem. There he took care of his father's sheep. You know, because of time, we can't take this. I will advise you to read it all from verse 1 to the end part of this chapter to get the whole story. We are just taking the principles that are very, very critical to the story. Yeah. So David was committed to little things. David was committed to little things. The Bible says that he that is faithful to another man's property, yeah. more will be committed to him. 
and he that is not faithful to another man's property will commit his own to him. No one. So he that is faithful in little will, will attract more. And he that is not faithful in little, even the least that he thinks he has, will be collected from him. That is a principle. So in the principle of growth is not to look necessarily look for more. Is to treat the one you have well. The principle towards growth is not necessarily that you are uh, aiming to get more, but that with the least that you have, with the little that have been committed to you, with the relationship that have been committed to you, with the people in your life right now, with the situations and with the circumstances that you have within you, are you maximizing? Those situations are you maximizing those environment those thoughts those people are you maximizing them are you giving your all are you committed David is committed to even the little things so another way that it was another proof that he was really committed was in verse 20 eventually his father would add, would instruct him to go give his father his brothers rather some food on uh, in the war so early in the morning David left the sheep with another shepherd now this is commitment he had the responsibility of taking care of sheep before but he wouldn't leave them without committing them to another shepherd very committed very committed in the lead to in the what so what people called inconsequential David was very committed. He took the food and left as Jesse had told him. When David arrived at the camp, the army was leaving. They were going out to their battle positions. The soldiers were shouting their war cry. So he, 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 he didn't leave the responsibility uh, of his sheep with, without shepherd. He didn't leave them without shepherd. He made sure that they still had shepherd while he was away. In verse 26, David asked the man who stood near him, what will be done to reward the man who kills these Philistines? Motivation. Motivation is needed. You must be able to look for ways to motivate yourself. Uh, the, Sometimes it might be that you want to have a vacation that is motivating. It might be the car or the house you want to buy. But there is it's a law that if you if you are if something is driving you, you will go further than if nothing is driving you. So go look for motivation for success. Go look for motivation for progress. Go look for motivation. Your family could be your drive. Our nation could be that motivation that you want to see our nation prosperous, or prosper. Could be that drive that is necessary and needed to do the trick to your motivation. What will be done to whoever takes away the shame from Israel? Goliath is a Philistine. He is not circumcised. Why does he think he can speak against the armies of the living God? So beyond materials, your motivation must be bigger than materials. If not, it has an expiry date. Your motivation should be bigger than yourself. That is the point. You know, when we say God is our motivator, or when you say a supreme being is your motivator, it's an indication that your motivation is beyond you. And your motivation should be beyond you. It should be about people. It should be not just be limited to you experiencing the good things of life. Even though that might be a good place to start, but it shouldn't end there. Your motivation should transcend into making sure that this, the rest of us also partake in whatever, in, in whatever is driving you. So David didn't fall short in this. Yes, he was motivated by reward, but he wouldn't end just at that spot. 
he continued and looked for an higher motivation beyond him talking about being motivated by God and by people and by people in verse 28 David oldest brother Eliab had David talking with the soldiers he became angry with David he asked David why did you come here who is taking care of those few sheep of yours in the desert I know you are proud your attitude is very bad you came down here just to watch the battle just to watch the battle you know people will despise you people would wrongfully assess you but you should not be intimidated by such wrong assessment <laughs> you know people will wrongfully assess you they would want to question your motivation and probably conclude on your motivation to be negative you should not be offended when people do that it's normal they did that to david it was not a rosy journey it was not david was not on a cruise yet there were limitations there were wrong assessment even from the ones that were closest to him talking about his brother his brother wrongfully assessed him wrongfully assessed his motivation meanwhile his motivation was about the reward yes but it was also about the people of god it was also about protecting the interest of god so do not despise or do not be dis displeased or do not be offended when you are wrongfully assessed it's part of life he will be wrongfully defined it's part of life Saul answered you can't go out against the Philistine and fight him you are only a boy Goliath has been a warrior since he was a young man see God is not going to 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 be partial in ignoring effort effort uh, for results to come effort must be put in place and God is not just going to be wicked enough to despise someone who has been putting the effort Goliath has been putting the effort that was what Saul would tell David you are only a boy but this guy had been a warrior since his youth <laughs> but unfortunately or fortunately for David Fortunately for David, David also has proof of effort. So in verse 36, I, your servant, have killed both a lion and a bear. Goliath, the Philistine, who is not circumcised, will be like the lion or bear I killed. He will die because he has stood against the armies of the living God. Can you beat that? So I'm not just here because I am fascinated to protect the name of God. No, you have confronted me with the track result of Goliath. Here am I. I have killed a bear, David said to Saul. I have killed a lion. These are my track record with bear ants. These are my track record. So God it won't be partial. In, and this is one of the reasons why we must be committed to the little things because the little things give us the opportunity to create track records we must be committed we must be committed to little things because they gives us opportunity to confront to confront the big things if david had not had this experience with the bear and the lion he would not have gotten enough courage to confront Mind you, everything that David has been getting from people is not motivation. <laughs> Some people will may time it as even discouragement because you're not encouraging him to take, you are questioning every part of him. Yes, questioning is allowed, should be allowed. You should allow people to question your motive. You should allow people to question your actions. You should allow them and you should be reasonable enough to present your evidence. 
or evidences in whatever way you, you, you might have gotten them. You should be ready to present your evidences. So in verse 37, the Lord saved me from a lion and a bear. He will also save me from these Philistines. So David would end up to the fact that it was not him. And we will see it in the defeat. It was not him. The, even though, yes, I was major instru instrument used in getting this done. But I know my source of strength. You must be able to acknowledge your source of strength. You must know what gives you strength and what takes strength away from you. And you must stick with what gives you strength. So if there is a particular group that gives you strength, that gives you motivation to face your world and your challenges, stick with that group. And if there will be any other group taking your strength away, taking your energy uh, away from you, then you should despise such or you should ignore such groups. So David recognized where his strength is coming from and he, he knew that still in touch with his strength he could take any challenges so for david philistines the goliath is just another bear or a lion so verse 39 david put on Saul's sword and tried to walk around but he was not used to all the armor Saul had put on him. He said to Saul, I can't go in this. I am not used to it. Then David took all off. What works? Stick with it. <laughs> Stick with what works. Especially when it's inspired. Uh, so for instance, yeah, you might be inspired to get into a particular profession. Uh, that profession might not be the interesting profession to do right now, but if you are inspired to do it, if you know how to do it, if you are passionate about doing it, stick with it. Stick with it. David needed the armor to be a warrior, but David had never been a warrior. What David had close to being a warrior is a shepherd, being a shepherd. And his tools of shepherding, the tools, the same tools he used to kill bear and lion will be collected from him and will be given the strange one just because he's facing another Philistines. So what David did was to acknowledge that this is strange to me. I have to fight in my terrain. I have to fight if I must win. I have to fight with the tools that I am used to, with the things I have practiced with, with the things I am, I, I am conversant with, with the area I am more passionate with. You get the gist. So it's not about just changing profession, this is what's selling, you go into it. What are you or what have you been inspired to do? What is that thing that gets you excited to do, that you know how to do well, that is what David would stick with. David stuck with his stick or his stone in this battle. So stick with what you know how to do best. So in verse 44, he said to David, Come here, I will feed your body to the birds of the air and the wild animals. Talking about tactics again, intimidation tactics. See, word is a tactics. Speaking is a tactics. Confession is a tactics. So when you say you cannot, you cannot, you are right. Someone said, someone said, when you say you can, you can, you are right. And when you say you cannot, you are also right. So speak what you want to see. Learn how to speak to situations. 
learn how to speak to circumstances. I usually say to myself at the gym that I am a champion. I am a champion when I'm tired. And from nowhere, I get the strength to finish it like a champion because I am a champion. <laughs> learn to speak to situations. Learn to speak to situations. Goliath will use it in a wrong perspective to intimidate people, but you can also use it in a right perspective. Learn to speak what you want to see. Your spouse, you want your spouse to be able to eh? speak things, positive things into their lives. You want to see a particular result in your life. Speak that thing into your life. Learn to speak your results. Learn to speak your result. Learn what to see. See, verse 45. David knew this secret, knew this principle. Verse 45, but David said to him, You come to me using a sword, a large spear, and a small spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heavens. Amen. He spoke back <coughs> before now. The Israelites were not speaking back. In fact, they were afraid. They became more afraid. The more they listened to the guy, the, the more they became afraid. So learn to speak back to your situations. But don't even wait till the situation starts speaking negative. Learn to speak what you want to see. Learn to speak and declare what you want to see. This is a long read. That's why we just taking all the uh, or we just taking the parts and in part the principles that is there but you want to agree with me that this is beyond stories <laughs> how did we come about reading these things like stories when there's so much so much depth in just one chapter <laughs> so much depth so much lesson to be learned to be in, in just one chapter so in verse 48 and goliath came near to attack him David ran quickly to meet him. Hmm. What does that mean? Goliath came. The, the mountain came confronting him. David went to confront him also. David went to tackle his battle. He was at the attacking end, not the defensive end. You know, in football, many people have said that the best form of attack, many coaches actually, is to, the best form of defense rather, is to attack. That the best way to keep your goal line of activities is to constantly attack your opponent. So David knew that if he does not run to his challenges. In just a while, the challenges will overwhelm him. Stop jackpying from your challenges. For instance, probably you're living in an environment that needs so much changes. Instead of looking for a way to escape, if you, if you have been inspired to leave, you can, you should. But if not, Instead of living for ways to escape, can you believe God, just like David, and run towards your Goliath? And run towards, because that is the only way you resolve issues. That is the only way you resolve. You don't resolve issues by retreating. You resolve issues by confronting them. You don't resolve issues by japa. <laughs> you resolve issues by facing them at on. And that is what David would do here. David knew that the tactics that Goliath is using, number one, he had used the word he failed with David. He was successful with the Israelites. Now he wants to use the intimidation tactics of action. And then David confronted that tactics head on. He ran towards Goliath. Man, <laughs> I, I, I'm just trying to play out the incident in my head and uh, trying to see how Goliath will feel like, wow, <laughs> this boy is running to me. <laughs> you know, that can create some level of fear also 
in Goliath. That can also create some level of fear. So David in verse 50, so David defeated the Philistine with only a sling and a stone. He hit him and killed him. He did not even have to a, a, sword, a sword in his hand. So talking about 1 Corinthians 3 verse 6. Paul said, I planted a pool of water, but God has been making it grow. The popular um, Bible verse, Bible version will say that I Paul planted Apollo water, but God gives increase. You David knew that eventually effort is needed, yes, but increase is of God. <laughs> increase would not come if those efforts had not been put in place. Imagine the effort that had to be put in place. He had to confront his brother wrong assessment. He had to convince Saul of his track record and he has to convince himself that he could do it. So his long years of effort contributed to the place where he is right now. But he is also fully aware that result is of God. So just like farmers, farmers a farmer goes to a field and then uh, puts the seed inside the ground and then goes back, keeps watering it and believes that it will grow. He doesn't know how it grows, but he knows that he has the effort on his side has been put into place. And the effort by of nature, of whatever, whatever form controlling it will also happen so we must get to the point where we know that god gives increase not us so eventually what we might need the our part is to look at some of the efforts that we can put in place for the adequate result to assure in verse 55 Saul had watched David go out to meet Goliath. Saul spoke to Abner, commander of the army. He said, Abner, who is that young man's father? Abner answered, as surely as you live, my king, I don't know. <laughs> so, result brings fame, recognition, and promotion. Uh, saying you need fame or you're going about fame without conscious of getting results or without con or that you need respect without conscious of result is saying that you want to do it in a fraudulent manner but in the right manner in the right approach you are not supposed to chase fame results as a matter of results as a matter of impact your fame would be spread. So, bringing it to the close, verse 58, Saul so asked him, Young man, who is your father? David answered, I am the son of your servant, Jesse of Bethlehem. So, resort brings about fame and recognition and promotion. So, the principle here is this. You're looking for that promotion can you get to work can you get to work can you can you be can you be faithful with your work can you be committed to that work can you be much more interested about the company's goal and the company's accomplishment while you are there yeah, because if you help the company achieve results or if you get the result necessary, you won't be the one asking for promotion. You won't be the one spreading the name. You, it will be spread naturally. It will be spread naturally. So uh, we see a lot of people trying in the bit of trying to get fame, uh, uh, um, doing things that um, 
that uh, that that undermine them uh, doing things that undermine them they are doing things that equate them to being an animal or more you know naked in uh, walking naked on the streets it might be, uh, uh, for just some likes it might be equal to being an animal it's equal to being an animal because only an animal is who walk naked without any a, 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 any any suggestion coming you know so but this is the right way to get results or fame get results be committed to little things and as you increase in little things you get enough proof to attack and confront bigger things then once you get bigger results you will get fame you will be famous you will be celebrity <laughs> you will be promoted so i hope this has helped this is a long video but i hope it has helped i hope we can see that these stories are beyond stories these narrations are beyond stories they are they are embedded with so much principles so much principles that we need for our day-to-day -day living here on earth so i hope to see you same time next week this is sunday morning dose this is beyond stories